I suppose I got to the stage when I should indulge in looking back as well as hopefully still looking forward to my future work. There are some people who end up as astronomers who right from the start knew what they wanted to do. I wasn't like that at all. When I was young, I was interested in uh, nature and also in numbers, but I don't think I had any conception that I might end up being a professional scientist. But I could think of two things which puzzled me when I was a child, uh, which perhaps showed I had some interest in science. Uh, one was extremely mundane. Uh, I remember uh, uh, watching the behavior of tea leaves in a bowl of water. And you know, when you, if you spin a bowl of water, the tea leaves pile up in the center at the bottom. And I remember puzzling about this. In fact, it wasn't until I was a third year undergraduate I understood why that happens. But that was something which puzzled me. And I also remember on uh, summer holidays looking at the tide tables and not understanding fully why high tide was different in times at different places around the coast. And there again, that's something which uh, uh, I puzzled about when I was young. And of course, only when I got to university did I understand the reasons for that. So I suppose, having thought about things like that, that indicates that I had some uh, propensity for doing science and uh, uh, worrying about things. I turned out to be good at maths, and therefore I was urged by my school to apply to uh, study mathematics at Cambridge, which I did. But actually, I've always regretted having done that, because I think I would have done far better to have had a broader science curriculum. The science I've used in my career, I've sort of mugged up as I went along. And it was clear to me when I was an undergraduate that I was not cut out to be a mathematician. I wasn't enjoying it. I was interested in the applications. And so when I got my bachelor's degree, I thought of how I might use my talent in mathematics to do some subject where I could have a more synthetic and synoptic style of thinking. And I thought quite seriously of doing economics, but I instead uh, decided I would do astrophysics. And this was really a bit of luck because I knew nothing really about astrophysics. I got a research grant to be based in Cambridge for my PhD, and I was allocated to Dennis Sharma as my PhD supervisor. And this was a piece of luck, because Dennis Sharma was the most charismatic person who was in touch with what was going on, and he had a very good stable of students, as it were. Even though I was diffident about whether I was doing the right thing, within about a year, I was fairly confident that I was going to get a PhD and that I was doing a field that was interesting. And that's because I was lucky that this was a time when new things were happening, the first evidence of the Big Bang, but also the first evidence for black holes. And one of the earlier phases of my work was in trying to make sense of uh, these extreme objects and to understand why they were radiating and uh, how they were able to be so bright. I was lucky in a way to be uh, appointed a professor at a fairly early age and in my 30s I already became uh, director of the Institute of Astronomy for a period. This gave me some obligation to uh, have a broad view of the subject and I appreciated that. In retrospect I feel I was uh, uh, not experienced enough to do a very good job in that role but I am happy that things seem to thrive um, and no disasters happened. In Cambridge, I, I derive great benefit not only from my own research but from participating in the debates. I think I've been someone who enjoys collaboration, and that's not just because the other people do most of the work, but I think uh, uh, less cynically because uh, the subject does evolve through a collective. Uh, effort. It's a collective enterprise, and I've been fortunate to be able to take part in the debates about all these subjects and to see how originally speculative ideas gradually come into focus and become firmed up as a combination of new data and new ideas.
going further on in my career, um, I was lucky in that many of the issues that I started to think about um, as a graduate student have continued to be the focus of my interest throughout later decades, understanding black holes, understanding the Big Bang, and other problems like that. But one uh, issue that really uh, became important in the uh, 70s and 80s was understanding the so-called cosmic dark matter. It became clear that there was more in galaxies than the stars and gas we see, that to understand how they hold themselves together under gravity, there had to be a lot more stuff producing gravity than what we see, and this was the first evidence for dark matter. And I was one of the people who uh, uh, was involved in some of the early work uh, on this so-called cold dark matter theory. When I was um, uh, getting to the age of 60, um, I uh, uh, realized that perhaps I ought to do a bit more in the way of sort of um, uh, general service to the university and outside. And I consciously tried to do something like this. But in a sense, I tried too hard because I ended up uh, having uh, various other obligations, which meant that during the last 10 years, I probably had less time for full-time research than I'd had previously um, because I um, uh, became head of a Cambridge college, Trinity College, for eight years. Um, that was very stimulating because it's a, a, a marvelous concentration of academic talent across all fields, so I was very good for my education. And I also had the chance to be president of the Royal Society, which is a five-year commitment, which, of course, again, involves a great deal of involvement across the field of science um, and international contacts and I became a member of the House of Lords, too, in 2005. So those three activities um, uh, diverted me from uh, uh, astronomical research, and having shed them, I hope I, I'm not too uh, gaga to be able to go back and spend a bit more time doing research uh, than I did in the last decade. Another thing that I've uh, uh, done uh, over the last 20 years, and which I'm glad to have done, is become more involved in uh, outreach and uh, uh, presenting work to uh, uh, the public. Um, I've written a number of books. Um, I've um, been editor of uh, an encyclopedia that sold half a million copies, um, and I feel I've made a contribution uh, through uh, speaking and writing about astronomy to general audiences. And I think I'm lucky in that the subject is one which does attract wide public interest. There's a huge amateur community, of course, and there's a lot of intellectual interest in the fundamental issues of origins. Where did the Earth come from? Where did life start? Where did the um, Big Bang come from? In my writings, I've really tried to uh, address some of those big questions. I think it's possible to predict one decade ahead what we'll be thinking about. I shall myself uh, be uh, hoping to take a greater interest in uh, planets around stars because uh, in my institute here in Cambridge we have one of the world leaders in this subject joining us and we're starting a new group in the subject. So I hope to learn a bit from that, but I hope also to continue uh, to uh, work with colleagues on um, clarifying some of the issues which are still mysterious about uh, extreme phenomena in the universe, gamma ray bursts, black holes, etc., and learning what we can from new computer simulations and new observations. I now find myself for the first time in more than 30 years not responsible for any institution. I'm not head of a department or head of a college or head of anything like the Royal Society. And so I suppose I can be more uh, outspoken and irresponsible in a sense. And one thing which I hope to do, as well as uh, continuing with, with my science, is to get involved in some political issues that I care about uh, and uh, get involved through various campaigning organizations and through the House of Lords. <laughs>